Hey, man. You got a minute? Hey, man, yeah, come on in. What's going on? All right, man. Uh, I don't really know how to tell you this, but I feel like it's very important for me to be to be upfront and, and transparent with you. Um, you know the whole situation with me and Tina. You know her family's down there, and you know that's that's ultimately where ultimately where she would like to be. You know she's moved down there last summer, um, but most likely uh, at the end of the summer you know, we're gonna we're gonna be moving down to Jersey for good. It was nearly four months ago when one of my best friends, my roommate, and the manager of Hybrid Fitness gave this news to me. While I was happy that Dusty would be moving away to strengthen his relationship with his girlfriend, selfishly what it meant for me was that our relationship might take the back burner as one of my best friends and of course how would that affect the gym and business. This was a scenario that I went through and I didn't quite know how to act. I had emotions pulling me one way, I had my mind and my thoughts pulling me the other and all I wanted to do was be a great friend and also continue to grow my relationship with Dusty because we've invested so much time together and we're a great team. Now you may have found yourself in a similar scenario where someone who's so close to you in your life who you've invested a ton of time with and you have shared memories and a bond was maybe going to be going down another road in their life. You can get defensive and you can get all different types of emotions. So the goal of this video is to help you navigate a similar scenario like this. I'm gonna share with you some examples of how I navigated this and hopefully you can walk away better prepared for if somebody ever in your life does decide to take another road, another path in their life, how you can increase the odds and maybe even beat them so that you can keep them in your life to some capacity and continue to nurture and build that relationship that you've invested so much time into. Now when Dusty gave me this news, there were three options that I had. One, I was able to beg Dusty to stay. Two was I could have pushed him away and treated him like he was going away and it was 100%. And three, I could have acted like nothing different was happening, act like nothing was gonna change. This brings me back to some of my early high school relationships and I fell in love in high school. Let's, let's just speak the truth. I fell in love and I was probably a little needy and if I ever felt like anything was wrong, I would probably be a little overbearing to say the least. And what I learned and what I soon read about in different books and taking different courses was that sometimes that overbearing or, or, or the begging or, or the feeling of I need something is actually polarizing, negatively polarizing. It pushes people away. This is part of the reason why you may see in different marketing campaigns that there are limited amounts left or some sort of scarcity is created because we all want things and are attracted to things that there's limited amounts of, some things that are rare. If something's always available or overly available, the value of it goes away. So the same thing applies to this scenario. If I begged Dusty to stay, he would understand because of how close our relationship is and how intermingled our lives are. But at the same time, it would come across as selfish on my end because this is something that's important to him. He has this goal. He's got this amazing relationship with his girlfriend that he wants to grow and develop. And for me to beg him to stay is purely a selfish move and also a little overbearing. You know, it would almost probably make Dusty want to go more rather than to stay. Now, another reaction that I could and have had this reaction in the past was the pushing away technique. I believe this is a coping mechanism to deal with loss by accelerating it. And in the end, I think it just blows up in your face and also makes the chances of you maintaining or continuing to build a relationship with this important person in your life just go down the drain. And so 
I could be offended and be like, are you serious? Like, you know, we've been building so much here together, you know, in the business, Dusty, like, get the hell out. Or I could just treat Dusty for the remaining time that he was here or that he's planning on being here, treating him like he's not important anymore. And I could demote him or um, in our friendship, not hang out anymore or not respond to texts or do all these things to distance the, the communication, to distance um, would be pushing away. And this is also not effective. Now the third option is what I ended up choosing in this scenario. Now the third option brings me to a movie that I watched when I was younger that really influenced the decision that I did make in this scenario called The Secret. While this movie was kind of foo-foo, it's really great about talking about the law of attraction. And what the law of attraction is, is it basically says that what you think about is the reality that you will create because ultimately your thoughts influence uh, your actions and your actions obviously influence your environment and what you live in, right? What you create. And so if you think about what you want, what is the end result? Uh, you need to first be clear on that. What do we want? If you don't know what you want, then you're, you're kind of driving in the fog. You're not going to really have a destination where you're going to end up or at least intentionally. But if you have a clear destination, at least you can start to draw that roadmap. Once you know what you want, which in this case was, hey, I want to maintain a relationship with Dusty and ultimately I'd like him to stay. But if he doesn't, I understand. Let's just do our best. We have to, we have to make our actions congruent with that. So what actions would most likely make Dusty want to stay? And so the third option is let's act like nothing is changing. Let's act, in fact, let's act like he is staying and we're gonna grow this company to the sky and we're gonna have the best friendship, right? And we're gonna continue to grow it, you know, and maybe even Tina will move up here. Let's say that's the best case outcome. Well, then how can we act in a way that would allow that? Now this goes to a little skit, which I wanna jump to here in a second. And Dusty asked me if he could buy business cards. And this is knowing, you know, that he was, he was gonna be most likely moving. He wanted to make an investment of business cards with his name on them that would be rendered unusable when he's gone. He asked, I wanna show you in a skit how, how I decided to react to this. Yo, man, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, dude, how's it going? Not too much, what's going on? I just write down some emails, just kind of finished up the, the business card look. Speaking of which, you got a minute? Yeah, yeah, of course. What's up? Sweet. So I was thinking, you know, um, probably a good idea to, to have those business cards to hand out to people. So uh, yeah. I'm thinking we should order them if that's cool with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Cool. So sure. What, what do you think? Like 250, 500? Yeah, why don't we start with 250 cool. and, and go from there? Awesome, man. Cool. So what do you think? Hey, I think it looks great. Sweet. Very nice. Awesome. I'll order did them up. Did you design that? I did. Wow. I did. Okay. All Thanks. right. Sweet. I'll order them up. All right. You the man. Done. Hey, dude. Well, hello, sir. What's up? There's a present here for you. Is that what I think it is? Check them out. By allowing Dusty to get the business cards, which really just cost me $50 or so, it really showed that, hey, like, I'm still here. I still want you part of the team. Let's get as much done as we can before you go. And it didn't push him or pull him away, if that makes sense. It maybe even demonstrated to him that, man, I'm really walking away from something special. I hope you find this helpful. Uh, I thought using real examples uh, might just make it more real for you. If you do have any questions about this way of thinking, you know, feel free to drop them in the comments or shoot me a PM. I'd be happy to talk through some stuff. Growing up, I had a lot of great mentors and people helped me uh, through these situations because for a long time I was really unable to take my emotions and then catch them, right? And catch those thoughts and then change my actions, right? My emotions just controlled me. And I still deal with that, right? We all do. I love to be there for you or at least to support you through any tough decisions or actions, you know, if that comes to you. Now with that being said, Dusty has an announcement make yeah so uh, we've we've decided you know we, we thought it through and it sounds like we're gonna stay here in Maine for a little while you know maybe uh, two years three years who knows we'll revisit it when the time comes but I'll be here for a bit you hear that he's staying and with that 
Dusty, we have another special announcement, don't we? That we do, my friend, that we do. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take on another exciting project here at Hybrid. Uh, and it's going to be called... The Small, the Small Steps, Steps Big, Big Results, Results Podcast. Podcast. That was pretty good, yeah. there we go. Stay tuned.